Hi there. The Queen Sack Trap is yet another trap in the Evans Gambit, and this is going to be the last, at least for the time being, of traps that I'm going to be doing in the Evans, as I feel a need to move on to some other pastures. So after e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4, bishop c5 is the Italian, but b4 now moves on to Evans Gambit territory. After bishop takes on b4, now c3 is going to enable the d4, push in the center, the bishop drops back to a5 and d4. Now after e takes on d4, white castles, we've seen this position many, many times. We've seen d takes on c3, and now we're looking at knight fc, uh, f6, which is still fine for black. Bishop a3 is logical, a logical developing move for white, preventing black from castling. So black plays d6, facilitating the exit of the bishop on c8 and shutting off white's diagonal a3, f8 to enable casting. But here white has to play energetically because he's down material and every move counts. So the move that white has to play is e5. And this is going to open up more attacking lines. Well, the move played, d takes e5, is actually even close to losing. And um, perhaps knight e4 would have offered black the best type of resistance. However, after d takes on e5, black is, is it three pawns ahead at the moment? Considerably ahead materially, but losing his position because now queen b3 is coming, targeting f7, and that's going to be defended by queen d7. Rook e1 now, and the rook joins the attack along the e file. Knight takes on e5 is, uh, is going to happen. So, how can black defend? Well, if e4, the pawn advanced e4, then knight g5 is going to hit the pawn on e4 as well as f7. So black can try queen f5, now giving up the pawn on f7 if white wants. However, better for white is the capture knight takes on e5. Because then if knight takes on e5, white has queen b5, which is check. And that's hitting the knight on e5 as well as the bishop on a5. White here is winning now in all variations after... Black's capture d takes on e5 a few moves back. However, rather than taking knight takes on e5, white can maybe end things in a rather, in a prettier type of way with bishop b5. Because now, if the knight drops back to d7, further defending the pawn on e5, white has this good shot, queen to d5, more pressure on the e5 pawn, and white is also threatening bishop takes the knight on c6, followed by queen takes on a5. So if the bishop drops back to b6, then white can take now on e5. And rather than uh, taking on e5, which will keep the rook active, if black captures on e5, then rook's going to take on e5 because the knights are pinned. If knight from c6 drops back to e7, hitting the queen, then we have a nice finish. With a queen sacrifice, knight takes on d7. That allows queen takes queen, so the queen takes on d5, but now a double check. And when double checks are involved, there's always trouble. Knight f6 is double check. The bishop on b5 is released, and the knight itself on f6. And wherever the king runs to, let's have a look at d8, then bishop takes e7 is the delightful checkmate. So this has been the Queen Sack Trap in the Evans Gambit. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.